the, the question though is what the heck is stability control, right? So the MotoGP bikes have traction control already. And what traction control is doing is it's measuring the speed of the two wheels and looking at the difference in speed. And if it sees that the rear is spinning at a higher rate than the front or significantly higher, it starts backing off torque to stop the spin. So traction control reduces torque based on wheel spin. Stability control, it also reduces torque. That's all it can do is reduce torque to the rear wheel. It does it based on slide motion or yaw motion. So if you think about the bike, it has an IMU, inertial measurement unit. It's looking at how the bike is moving in space. So when it senses that the bike is leaned over and rather than tracking through a corner, it's sliding, either the rear sliding or both wheels are sliding to some extent through a corner, it measures that yaw motion. And now stability control can also reduce torque when it senses that uh, as the input. The reason they did this is the argument is a safety reason. So there are times when riders create sort of catastrophic high sides that aren't just driven by rear wheel spin. It's by a huge slide that then suddenly grips and launches the rider. So the, the argument for stability control is a safety one. The argument against it is the argument against any electronic rider aids is that it takes a little less, takes a little more control out of the rider's hands. Uh, and this one in particular, the argument is that it's probably benefiting some manufacturers more than others. Which manufacturers would it benefit more? So I, 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 my understanding from what I've read, and you're kind of reading the, the, between the lines with this stuff, it seems like this really is intended to help Aprilia and Yamaha mostly, mm. which would make sense. Those two s seem to be the bikes that are the most sort of corner speed driven right. bikes. Yeah. Um, so they're probably the most susceptible to slides like this. So in theory, or the argument anyway, is that, hey, you're trying to like tweak the rules to bring one of the other manufacturers closer to Ducati specifically. Um, so that's kind of the argument against stability control. All right, so let's talk about stability control a little bit more because ABS is not allowed in racing. And it, I'm a little surprised as to why, right? Because they do things like stability control because they say, well, this enhances safety. We've done a lot of things like the, for safety. But ABS is turned off, so it, it and the stability control, how effective can it be where it doesn't get to use any type of ABS under a braking event? And why, like, let's talk about ABS on race bikes because on a street bike, I absolutely love having it on a street bike. I really love having the IMU lean sensitive ABS on a street bike. Now, and, and I still ride in such a way that ABS will never ever turn on, but I sure like that it's there. Yep. So what's the difference between racing and a street ride street rider as far as this ABS thing. So I would, I would, I believe the argument against ABS in racing is just one of competitiveness in terms of what are you seeing the riders actually do. So if we turn on ABS, now pretty much any rider can break at the absolute limit for a corner entry. So now you've taken away the ability to make passes on entry because everyone is passing, or sorry, everyone is breaking at the absolute maximum everywhere. Now, Formula One had ABS for a little while. Yep. And but they don't now. It, well, and there's other car racing series that also have ABS. The, the problem, it, it kind of has the same issue where in you, you're really taking away a lot of the opportunity for the driver, the rider to show their talent. And it becomes more an engineering exercise unless a riding competition. And that's, that I think is in this, in the vein of why they don't allow it for motorcycles. Um, the the upside of it for a street rider is obviously safety. Uh, you know, if you get into a surprising situation or panic situation or bad road conditions, which happens all the time. That to me is the biggest reason that ABS will help help me if I miss something, mm -hmm. right? The, the very first bike that I got ABS was probably 12, 15 years ago. And riding California, uh, like China, Laurel, Grade, whatever these janky little roads, 
there it's shady, it's mossy, there's sometimes gravel and just like slowing down into a downhill corner. And I'd watch the dashboard just start lighting up like crazy. I never felt anything in lever or whatever. And as I got into that corner, I saw that there was just like pea gravel and a stream of water across it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I loved that ABS was there. Mm -hmm. And now a lot of riders will say, well, as I'm just going to mash the brake everywhere I go and just let ABS sort it out. And let's talk about so that. that. And that also kind of like late, like uh, comes into what you're saying about racers just mashing the brake at the last second and let it sort it out. But also. Right. So, so your street like your production mic that you can go by, it has ABS that is tuned for street tires on street conditions and roads. Uh, your street bikes abs is not tuned to deal with a racetrack with slick tires that are super grippy on really good asphalt um so you you really would need to get the the abs for the race bikes would be tuned very differently and, inter, and it would intervene very differently to to adjust because of that grip but the so the the uh, the mentality of we'll just mash the brake that's the best braking situation that is ever going to happen maybe for the rider at that skill level that's true let the ABS, the ABS sorting it out is probably better than what you can do. The, the trade-off of that is if that's your mindset and that's the way you're going to go about riding, you're never going to develop much feel or skill for using the brakes. Because uh, the, the, all the ABS can do is limit brake pressure. That's all it can do, right? It can pulse brake pressure, but at the end of the day, all it's doing is pulling back brake pressure. Okay. There is still so much more dynamic things happening on a motorcycle than in a car. In a car, if you look at race cars, the amount of travel that they have is minimal. You're not really getting a lot of pitch front and back. You do get weight transfer for sure, um, but you don't get nearly the amount of weight transfer that we get on a motorcycle. When was the last time you saw a race car do a stoppy into a corner, right? It doesn't happen. On motorcycles though, we get so much extra grip from the weight transfer because remember, Friction force isn't just how grippy or how good is the rubber and the road. That is just friction coefficient. Friction force is friction coefficient times the normal force. The normal force being effectively the opposite of how much load you push into the tire. So if I have a tire that is rolling along, it's going to be rolling along smoothly at 80 miles an hour with no extra load on it other than the weight of the vehicle. And then I just lock the brake instantaneously pull the brake lever as hard as I can and lock it, ABS will probably save me from a massive, massive slide, but I still have to let the weight transfer onto it. And the ABS will start intervening even before the weight transfers. So it'll slow down my weight transfer to some extent. If instead you rode like you should ride and slowly and progressively loaded the front, so it actually got weight into it before you braked and before you build a lot of pressure, yeah, built up pressure to the maximum, you're going to get to stop faster, okay? Now, better still, as we talked about last week with the rear brake, you know, applying the rear brake a little bit early to squat the rear end down, it, all of these sort of physics things still come into play even when you have ABS. So as a street rider, if you have ABS, that's a great backup in case something goes wrong, but I wouldn't, I do not think it's the right attitude to just say, oh, well, I'm just going to mash the brakes whenever I want and let the computer sort it out. Because it isn't always going to sort it out perfectly. And you are giving up a lot of control and ways that you can make the braking better. Right. So if you think about it in simplest terms, and we say this in our videos all the time, the grip comes from weight, right? We load the tire before we work the tire. There's the whole, um, uh, you know, pressure, not, not our tire pressure, not much how much air is in the tire, but how much we're putting it into it. You get peeing, the rubber is actually being deformed into the road surface. So you're actually getting, you know, not only is the contact patch growing, we're actually getting more physical yep. contact as we go through. So the ABS would also be able to be more effective and more precise working with a loaded tire versus an you know, underloaded tire, right? And And then you start thinking about or what we see at the racetrack, right? That these riders that come in with the trust, the tech mentality, mm -hmm. right? And we see it with, uh, you know, ABS and, and traction control, that they just, they are abrupt with all of their controls and they let the bike sort it out. And to a certain extent, they go really 
fast with not a whole lot of finesse until they get to a point where the systems are so overwhelmed, they are so far beyond what the physics and the tire is capable of, then we see very violent crashes, mm -hmm. right? And so you, it seems to me you would want to still build, well, this is what I advocate for, build the right technique and leverage the benefits of a technology, not just rely on them mm -hmm. blindly. Because there's also a situation on my older Multistrada, I didn't realize it, but something had clipped the ABS line, yep. right? And so like going into a corner, suddenly there was no ABS. And if, if my only way of riding is just trust the tack mm -hmm. and suddenly that tack isn't there, now what? I think the other thing too is if you ride in such a way that you are solely dependent on the technology to produce the riding that you, the, the inputs that you need or rather the outputs, I guess, you're going to plateau as a rider very, very quickly, right? It, if I told you, hey, Dave, never think about loading brake pressure, just mash it as hard as you can, you are going to get to the ceiling of what the ABS will let you do quickly. And you'll feel like, oh, look how quickly I progressed. But how are you ever going to get beyond that? If all you know is to just mash it on the brakes or on the throttle and just say, hey, I'll let the TC sort it out. You're basically saying, hey, my limit as a rider, whether it's on the track or on the street or what have you, it is the limit of the technology. And so you're never really going to get to progress beyond that. And then again, if you're in a situation where you don't have those things available to you or they're not as good as they were for some reason, then what do you do? 